I'm glad to see you in church this morning. If you're viewing with us online, thank you for joining us this morning. We're so glad you're with us. Amen. We're going to turn it over to the hymn choir. Praise the Lord. I say we're going to have a good time out of that fire.
did that. Sometimes, sometimes Pastor Hint, you have to change around from what you were going to say. You have to change it around. I've done that in remembrance of Brother Kilcott. That was one of his songs. Better day is coming by and by. Y'all don't hear me? Better day is coming by and by. Yeah! Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, Chapel. Let's, let's put our hands together for, for, for praise and awesome God. We serve an awesome God. A God that has never changed. The same today as he was yesterday. Are you, are you with me? Come on now, church, let's give God some praise. David declared one day, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Are you glad today, church? Are you blessed today? Come on, let's give God some praise. And let's also thank God for our awesome man and woman of God. Amen. Minister Watkins is going to come with the reading of our scripture. Praise him, say. Act like we love the Lord today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to thank the Lord. I want to love you. And I'm a proud grandfather. That's my granddaughter this morning getting baptized. And I want to thank the Lord for that, for making them first steps. Amen. I'm reading from the, the New King James Version, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 17. Where's my glass? Hallelujah. That was a lie. Amen. And the word of God is blessed. Amen. It says, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest ye sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Amen. And now this is the blessed part. It said, for this we say to you by the word of the Lord. We know that God is not a man that he should lie. Amen. The Lord himself said, this is going to happen. It says, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. Choir. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Thank you, uh, Reverend Palmer, Reverend Watkins. We thank God for our associate ministers, our worship leaders for the day, and all those who are gathered here in the Lord's house today. Amen. Can you just give God a hand of praise Hallelujah. for being Glory in the Lord's God. house? Amen. Amen. You look good. Amen. You look good. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We're excited to be in the house of the Lord today because this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. And we're going to rejoice Glory. and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but when I woke up this morning and saw the bright sunshine, I say, God, thank you yes. for another opportunity to give you praise. Amen. Amen. So perhaps you're worshiping with us for the very first time. If that's you, please stand. 
here at Tabernacle. We want you to know we're honored that you chose to worship with us this morning. Amen. First time us. Amen. Wonderful. God bless you, sir. God bless amen. you. Amen. 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 Glad amen. To God bless you. you. Glad to have you. Glad to have you. Those around them, welcome him to the Tabernacle. Amen. Amen. And sir, as you will, if you will please fill that card out and return it to the awesome. God bless you God as well. God bless you. God bless amen. you as well. Amen. Praise Thank God. You. Amen. 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 And for those of you who will receive that card, we ask if you would please complete the card and return it to the Welcome Center in the, in the best of you. Amen. Perhaps you're joining us by way of social media, our global church for the very first time. We're excited that you chose to join us in worship because we know that you could have gone any other place um, to worship, but we're thanking God that you worship with us. So please put in the VIP section, please put in the comment section, VIP, and someone will connect with you. So let's thank God for our online worshipers Glory. this morning. Amen. TBC Amen. Global, Amen. God our bless TBC you. Hallelujah. Amen. And let's Amen. prepare Amen. our hearts for today's morning announcements, and then after that we'll give some um, pastoral reflections, but uh, give your attention to the screen. Amen. Amen. It's time for your TBC Connection, keeping you in the know for what's ahead. Come one, come all, and bring your children to Tabernacle Baptist Church on Monday at 6 o'clock p.m. as we honor the legacy of Jackie Robinson. Discover the inspiring story of how he used his faith and determination to break the color barrier of baseball. Listen to the tales of local athletes who face their own challenges yet triumph. They'll share their journeys and emphasize the importance of scoring in life. See you there. Calling all kingdom men for an afternoon of strikes, spares, and brotherhood at Textile Bowling Lanes in Belmont, North Carolina. Join us on Saturday at 1130 a.m. for a time of brotherly bonding. Show off your skills, connect with fellow kingdom men, and let's knock down some pins together. If you are seeking support and guidance through grief, Our grief ministry will have a booth set up in the lobby after worship today. Stop by and connect with this invaluable resource. The Impact Ministry would like to send a gracious thank you to all who donated to the prom giveaway. With your generosity, we were able to assist multiple teens this year. Black Maternal Health Week is recognized each year from April 11th through 17th to bring attention and action to improving black maternal health. My name is Dr. Tanya Hudson, and I am a former recipient of the Founders and Legacy Scholarship. I received this scholarship when I was transitioning into my master's program. And at that time, I was only working part-time at Cleveland Community College And I did not have a regular salary. I did not have benefits for my health insurance. And that scholarship is what allowed me to continue on the trajectory that led me to being the chair of the early childhood elementary and middle grades program at Fayetteville State University. And if it wasn't for the support from the Founders Scholarship, my church family and community, I would not truly be here where I am today. I am so grateful that the scholarship allowed me to alleviate some of that financial stress that students often have when trying to get into a college or master's program at a university. The scholarship takes away some of the fear of having to think about how am I gonna pay for my books? How do I pay for my tuition? What about transportation to and from the institution where you're gonna go? For me, it was the scholarship that said, I can do this. So with my goal-oriented disposition, I decided that I was gonna let the scholarship give me or afford me the opportunity to not be a disappointment to myself, my first family, and of course, my church community. I took this scholarship and I use it to the best of my abilities. I travel three to four days a week from Gastonia to Bowling Springs. I studied multiple hours throughout the week, as well as creating a very strategic calendar in my home. I reviewed every syllabi that I received from my instructors. I went through those syllabi because I realized that if I did not know what the requirements were for these programs and my courses, how is I going to be successful? With my type A personality, I highlighted so many different things. 
I was able to capture when my assignments were due, but also create a strategic schedule that said when I was going to study, when I was going to work out, and of course, when I was going to eat. Because all of these things impact our ability to be successful. Ultimately, my goal was I just didn't want to be in a university and not be able to leave something behind. The Founders and Legacy Scholarship allowed me to do that. And so I am pleading to our church family and to the community. There are so many students who would love to have had this opportunity, opportunity like I did. And if you would just deep, dig deep into your pockets and either pull out some money or grab your phone and go on to Giveify or one of these other platforms that we have, it's so easy to give. And that's what I plan to do today. I am going to make a contribution to the Founders and Legacy Scholarship and believe in them the way they believed in me. I am Dr. Tanya Hudson, and I approve this message. The Founders and Legacy Scholarship campaign is right around the corner. Wear your college or TBC apparel on Sunday, April 21st, as we aim to raise $50,000 to support students' education beyond high school. Whether you contribute as a family, individually, or in honor of a loved one, every donation counts. Spread the word and encourage your network to make a difference. This has been your TBC Connection, keeping you in the know for what's ahead. Amen. Hey, praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord, Amen. Dr. Hudson. We are super proud of her and uh, thank God how she has matriculated and so many others who've been blessed by that. So, um, our ushers, do you have envelopes? Do you have any, those founders' envelopes? Amen. Praise God. At the close of service today, I want everyone to take an envelope and pray over it. Pray over it this week. I heard one amen over amen. here. Her name was Mary. <laughs> First one went to the tomb was a lady named Mary. <laughs> Peter, Jane, John, Zebed, I need y'all to say amen too. Amen. I want us to pray about it. Before you even fix in your mind, positively or negatively, because I hear some thinking, 50000 I ain't doing, you talk about what you're not going to do. What we can't do, but we got a can-do mentality. Amen. It's doable. Amen. I see beyond 50. Amen. I see beyond 50. Do I have any believers in here? I need somebody, Amen. I need two or three to touch and agree with me. Amen. God be the glory. Two or three, if two or three get touch and agree, it shall be done. Amen. Beyond 50. Because we got somebody in here that can write a check for 50. Somebody watching can write for 50. We don't ever know who's in the house. But that is our goal uh, next Sunday. Amen. We'll start next. Amen. You can start today or whatever. You can give small increments. Don't ever think that your amount amen. is too small. Amen. I'm going to say this. When I was in college, I'm going to move on. But when I was in college, my grandmother, who was on fixed income, would periodically send me a little envelope with her scribble, her little name, write a little note from home, and put a $5 bill in there. You got to understand, $5 was golden. Amen. Where's my generation that remember that five dollars? Five dollars. Five. When you in, five dollars was golden. Y'all like five dollars. Amen. 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 I got twenty dollars every two weeks, and then you know when you off in college and you go eat with your friends and everything and have a good time, and then you spend it all. Mm. I'll call back and say I spend it all. Well, you know you got to wait two weeks. So oh you Lord. Pay, so you better know I monitored my spending with the money that I received. She had to wait on the Lord. And wait. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and we're excited. We're excited. I have a friend of mine. I call him a nephew. Dr. Richard Flippin uh, will be with us as our preacher. So we're excited about that on next Sunday. So if you want to wear your college paraphernalia, your shirt and all that, uh, that's okay. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. You can wear that. We, we've got to have a meeting on the Duke stuff, you know. I don't know. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Some of y'all, I done lost two or three of y'all already. I, but no. Wear that wherever Amen. you want to. Let's support, and that's fine. Amen? Amen? Praise God. I also want to just give a shout-out 
uh, to uh, those who participated on yesterday in the uh, run for the money. We've got several organizations that are part of that, African American Museum, also Off the Street Ministry, uh, the, the Thomas Cricket Scholarship, several other programs uh, you have from now to the 21st to still give, and they'll give matching funds. Amen? But you can also make a commitment to give to those organizations, not only now, but throughout the year. They, we need your support. The African American Museum needs your support. Off the Street needs your support. In fact, they're going to have a program here, the Jackie Robinson uh, uh, presentation on tomorrow from 6 to 7. Let's support our own. Amen. Amen. Let's support our own. Let's support our own. Praise God. Amen. I want to give a shout out to all of our leaders who were here at our leadership advance. We had an yes, awesome, yes, yes. awesome time on Friday as well as yesterday. Bishop McCullough did a phenomenal job awesome as job. well as Amia Massey uh, in sharing. And so we look forward to uh, rolling out some information at a later date about our structure here, um, how we, leadership structure here at the Tabernacle. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We want to give a shout out also to uh, several of our members, uh, Mr. Travis Hunt. Uh, where's Travis? Right, there on the front, right, right here. Right. He's on the on the A game. <laughs> he stop. Pause for a minute. Right there in the aisle. Right there. Pause. <laughs> there you go. He won uh, at the Denomini Denami uh, program on last night. Usher of the year. Woo! Amen. Praise oh, God. God. And that says a lot for yes. your work recognition throughout the community. Woo! Amen. Yes. Praise God. Yes, yes, also, yes. Uh, Courtney and our pro team, Tabernacle Pro Team Woo! won. Pro team yes. and audio visual. Yes, yes, Amen. Yes, yes. Pastor Ricky was, was on the sing. He was one of the minister of music vocalists for the year. He didn't win, but he won here. Amen. Yeah. So you're the vocalist of the year. Yeah. Amen. He beat me by two points. Amen. Amen. I was that close. And Whitney was a nomination. And was Whitney no as well was a yes, nominee. Was Amen. A we celebrate well. you. And then the, uh, 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 what they call it, the spouse of the year? That's what they said. Lady Hinton won the spouse of the year. <laughs> Pastor's first lady of, of the God year. Be the glory. Amen. God be the glory. Praise God. Amen. 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 We are super proud. We are thankful for Amen. our first lady. Amen. Amen. God be glorified. Amen. 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 Come on, show some love. <laughs> y'all know I'm celebrating with y'all, so you need to celebrate with our first Amen. lady. We are super, Amen. super Amen. proud. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I was in it as a nominee, but uh, I'm glad I didn't win. It was all about good um, covenant and not competition. Amen. Great Amen. time, great Amen. program. Amen. And so I want to give a shout out to Mr. Pierre Crawford. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise, Praise God. Amen. Praise God. All right. Well, that said, well, tomorrow is um, April the 15th. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Jesus said, render to Caesar <laughs> what belonged to Caesar and give to God oh, it belongs to him. what belongs to God. Amen. We have a prayer session later. <laughs> Praise God. Listen, if you don't have some fun sometimes, you're going to be crazy all the time. Amen. I've, learned to, I've learned to laugh, learn to love, learn to lift. Amen. And lift up my eyes to the hill. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. Let's remember all the activities that are going on here and around our church. Um, Bible study, BET, is on Wednesday at 12 noon as well as 7 o'clock in person as well as online. Love to have you all to come to be a part of this empowerment teaching week Amen. after week. Amen. Amen. We're going to prepare to worship God through our giving. Uh, after that, we're going to prepare to uh, fellowship. In we have uh, we had several candidates that were scheduled to be either baptized and fellowship in this morning, but we had only one uh, uh, baptism, and so we are super grateful for that. And you heard Brother Watkins up here cheering. Uh, he was a super proud grandfather. Amen. As my grandbaby being uh, Miss Haley, so we're super proud of that. So we, we're going to do that. Let us stand. Let us stand. Amen. And uh, yes, those worshipers, come on in. We're super glad to have you in, have you to hear this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 
Praise God. Hold your offering up. Hold your phone up. Uh, just hold your hand up. We, we have several opportunities or ways you can give our online platform, GiveLify, through Cash App, through Text to Give. Amen. In person. Amen. You can drop it off, mail it in, or you call us. We'll come get it. Amen. Amen. Hold your hands up like you're blessed. Thank you, Father. Then look around. You're, you're in good company. You're in good company. We are blessed. We are anointed to win. We're declaring that. Now, you may have some seasons and some moments in life where things are challenged. But those challenging moments teach you how to trust God. And know that even though it's tight right now, greater is coming. You declare in the atmosphere, my broke days are over. My debts are being canceled. Debts are being canceled. I'm walking. I'm walking. In increase. In increase. Expansion. Expansion. And overflow. And overflow. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. How many of y'all believe that? Hallelujah. You really believe that? Thank you. Father. Put a praise on it and declare it. Put a praise on it and declare it. Hallelujah. Put a praise on Lord it and declare it. Hallelujah. Amen. When I go to my mailbox, I don't look for bills. I know when bills are coming. I know when they're due. I look for blessings. Kid you not, I can testify. I can testify today. I said that last Sunday, and I checked. You know how you get mail and look like it looks like junk mail, and it turned out to be it turned out to be jump mail. <laughs> I had a refund. <laughs> I had nine <laughs> checks. No, I paid the bill. It's mine. No. <laughs> we. I got to let look. <laughs> Hallelujah. You jump. I... Won't he, Willie? <laughs> Let's pray together. Praise God. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father. With our hands lifted. Yes, God. As a sign of our collective praise as a sign of our culture of faith. We may go through seasons, setbacks, situations that seem impossible, but we declare today our God, our God. will supply yes. all of our needs. All our needs. You, are our you are our shepherd. We lack for nothing. Lack for nothing. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For favor, for favor. Increase, increase, expansion, expansion. And, overflow. and overflow. In Jesus' In name, Jesus name, we partner with you. We partner with you. Our tithes and offerings. Tithes and offerings. We, sow we sow into your kingdom. Into your kingdom. And we declare, Father. And we declare, Father. The faithfulness, the faithfulness of your word. Of your word. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Put a praise on that. Put a collective. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. I believe. I don't just speak it. We Thank don't believe you. in gimmicks. Don't believe in games. You, we believe in the word of God. God said it. He'll it do it. So. Come on. Tell somebody. He said it. He'll do it. He said it. He'll do it. I believe. I believe it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those of you who are giving electronically, go ahead and do that. Go ahead and push in or whatever you need to do. Amen. Take your seats. Amen. Just, just prophesy on your road. We are blessed on this road. We are blessed on this road. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Just, just before, amen, I, I, just before we prepare our offering, um, I, I saw, I was watching the, um, the, um, NCAA tournaments. You know, every now and then they'll push folks across when I, you know, faces on the scene. And uh, what, what is it called over in the, in the Charlotte area? Anyway, I saw Dwight and, and Tamika Byrne all on TV. Their son, uh, 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 DJ Burns with North Carolina State. Congratulations. Go ahead and stand Make so they'll proud. know who you are. Awesome. We're, we're Go, super DJ. proud. We're super proud. Yes, 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 yes. 
wonderful yes. parents, awesome. amen, Dwight and Jamaica, amen. amen. They were considered a Cinderella team. 11 down, had to win five games just to stay alive. Turned around and won the SEC. And went to the Sweet 16. I'm super proud. And we are super proud of what Amen. God is doing uh, in, in your lives and in, in, in DJ's life. Amen. Amen. So when he, get a, when he get a window, you know, tell him, come on by Tabernacle, and, uh, and then we'll talk. Yeah, come and encourage others. It's the power of possibility. It's the power of possibility. Amen. I'm excited about the next chapter. He's a graduate student. Blessing. See, God raise up people like that to show blessings. Not somebody way down the street over in, no, in the in, house. right here in Gastonia. In the house. In the house. Amen. And that's why we're super proud. Amen. One of our young ladies getting ready to go to Auburn University. Amen. D1 school, national scholarship. Amen. Amen. Yeah. favor y'all. Amen. Amen. It's Amen. in the house. Amen. Praise God. Well, I want our deacons, ministers, and associate deaconess, associate ministers, y'all come around. Start making your way around. We have, have only one, but we're going to show her uh, uh, some love. Amen. Where, where's Grandpa? Come on up here with her. You can stand by. Amen. Amen. Brother Watkins, he says, and Brother Watkins, you're you going to, all right, we got you. Praise God. You press your way. We're gonna do this, and uh, we, we take we take we're thankful. Amen, brother brother Brooks. I'm sorry. While while they are coming, he's going to read out those other persons who are here. Amen. Now leaders, uh, you know, please hear Pastor Hinton good. He has a saying that he says, "Shake and bake." Amen. That means you. We want to move this expeditiously. Amen. Praise God. And then after the worship today, we'll have a, a meet and greet in the Family Life Center. Amen. Praise God. We're going to come. On behalf of Dr. and Mrs. Hinton and the entire Tabernacle Baptist family, Baptist Church family, we would like to extend a warm welcome to our new members to the body of Christ. When I call your names, please come forward. Angela Hammond, James Hammond, and Miss Haley Littlejohn. What we will do, once we shake your hand, of course, it's called giving the right hand of fellowship. After we've given you the right hand of fellowship, it is Baptist order and biblical order that you have full rights and privileges of every member of this church. We welcome you to the family of God. Amen. God bless. A shout out to Pastor Rob um, 
Sister Tarana, uh, Minister Dr. Truett, for bringing our youth from the youth church. Sister Strother, I'm not sure, not Strother, but I mean Truett, from the youth church. Can we give a shout? And, and Duff, amen. All of our youth leaders, amen. I, I start calling names, I miss somebody. Can, can we shout, give a shout out to them for our youth and teen church? Amen. We praise God for that. Well, let's thank God for them as we, you all may, you may take your seats. God bless you. you all take, come on, thank God for them. We praise God, several of our youth that came through. Uh, we'll be graduating this year. We've got some high school and some college graduates, so it's, it's a great time to be praising God. Amen. And we want our children to stay actively involved in our church, our scholarship. Uh, our focus is for those children who stay active from, from, from the from the wound all the way to the tomb. That's what we say, amen. We, uh, when you get old and in your gray area for every age of, of life, but uh, we want to make sure we encourage those children and support them. We want to make sure parents, children can't always, when they're under 16, they can't drive. They can't come to church by themselves. You got to bring them. So whenever we have programs, whenever we have choir rehearsals or any other thing, you got to bring them. And I know some parents don't like that concept of, well, when I, I, I was growing up, my mama drugged me and made me go. It made you a better person. So let's borrow from a little bit of that old school and you be the parent and tell your children what they're going to do and not let your children tell you what they're going to do. Mind tell us now, thank you. Got a doctor out of the deal and an NBA player out of the deal. Something worked. <laughs> Something worked. I'm just saying. Amen. I ain't preaching now. Come on, praise team. Lead us in a selection, and we'll get ready for the word. Amen. Ricky, you like you're ready to sing. You're like you're ready to preach. I am. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. Paul and Silas. Hallelujah. Amen. I love Dr. Ricky. Listen, God, God spoke to, to Moses, and Moses asked God a question in the burning bush. I remember he said, uh, you want me to go to Egypt? Who, 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 will, I, who will I say sent me? God said what? I am that I, I am that I am. And, and, and Jesus flipped it. Jesus asked his disciples a question in Matthew 16. He says, who do men say that I am? 
Cypher says, Jesus, you're controversial. Some, some say you're all these other different people. He said, okay, cool. Well, I'm controversial to them, but, but who do you say that I am? I ask you a question. Who is Jesus to you? Peter answered the question. He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. But I want to ask you a question. Do you know who he is to you? This song simply reminds us who he is. Listen, it says this. I am the Lord. I'm the almighty God. I am the one for nothing is too hard. I am the shepherd. I am the door. I am the good news to the bound and the poor. I am. That's what he's saying to you now. I am. I am. I am the lamb, I am the ram in the bush for Abraham, I am the ultimate sacrifice for sin, I am your redeemer, the beginning and the end, I am.
you to put the words of I am back on the screen somebody need to take a snapshot of that on your phone so you can remember that I, I know you was trying to remember all of that you you couldn't remember all of that yeah put it up there so they can get it somebody put it on your hallelujah no go back the I am I am hope I am peace next one the next one there it is and the next one no that that's it that's it I am hope I am strength I am peace I am joy I am rest I am your comfort and your relief from your stress yeah somebody go ahead and take take your come on go ahead and take that okay those that need it so some of y'all need that and if it's not for you you get it and you can send it out and to somebody else because they're gonna be stressing out you can tell them that I went to church yesterday and I minister music and our praise team was leading us in that so 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 I I'm not stressing out there it is get the next one 
Go ahead. Some of y'all want to get it, put it on your screenshot. Get a screenshot. That's excellent. Hallelujah. Because you won't be able to write all that down right quick, but you can. And every now and then you just need to remind yourself. What's that song? Send a reminder. You, you have to preach to yourself. You got to talk to yourself and remind yourself what the word has said, what God has said. Amen. Some of y'all got your mind on tomorrow. And next week, people are stressing out. You come to church, weighed it down. Trouble, wrestling with stuff. He said, I am your strength. There's the next one. Your strength, I'm faith, I'm love, power, freedom for this hour. Because you're going to have moments in your life. Keep living. Yeah. Brother Holland, you said keep eating birthday cake. You're going to have those moments. You're going to have moments when you're in church on Sunday, you're on cloud nine. And by Tuesday, you feel like you're on the storm that Jesus and the disciples went through the boat just rocking. And you can't call nobody but Jesus. Slip those hands up. I know we're doing a whole lot, but it's all right. It's all right, because you go to game, you go to the party, you go everywhere else, and you do everything, and you come to church, and you want a, a song, a prayer, and a word, an offering, and then go home. No, no. Father, we love you. We bless you. We praise you. We thank you that you are the I am God. Everything we need, before we need it, when we don't know what we need, you are, and we say thank you. As we come to the preaching moment, give us your inspiration, give your impartation, give this motivation, give this inspiration, give us salvation. Whatever is needed, God, we're open. Use me as your vessel as your holy conduit to communicate your word. Holy Spirit, you are our life coach. Teach us. We need to hear directly from you, the heart of the Father. We love you now. Give us receptive ears, receptive hearts. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Stir up in us and stir up in the atmosphere. We pray now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Put those glad hands together and let's just worship and bless God, hallelujah. Thank you, praise team. Come on, let's thank God for these anointed voices that lead us week after week and remind us through song and music, amen. Praise God. You got your Bible, your iPad, your iPhone, let's go to work, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hold it up, hallelujah. Shout with me, the Bible is the Holy Word of God. I am what it says I am. I am a faith believer. My faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the Word of God. As I hear the Word, read the Word, meditate on the Word, and live the Word, I can have every promise of God's Word in my life. I declare today, I am, I am phenomenally blessed. I am anointed to win. Amen. Praise God. You keep speaking that on your life. Some of y'all keep telling me, I'm so sick. I'm sick and tired. I'm this. You keep speaking it. Keep speaking it. You're going to have whatever you say. Because life and death is in the, mm-hmm, I'm speaking blessed. I'm speaking favor, phenomenally favor. Favor is following me every day. Grace and mercy with me. Hallelujah. Let's get right to work. Amen. 
I want to continue the message we began last week, the impartation last week from the book of Acts of the Apostles, also known as Acts of the Holy Spirit, chapter 4. Let's look at verse 32 and 33. Amen. Acts chapter 4, verse 32 and 33. Are you there? Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's read this together. Now, I'm reading from the New King James Translation. Word of God says what? Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone among anyone say that any of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. One of the things they had was Jesus and their faith. Verse 33 says, and with great power... The apostles, notice, gave witness of what? The resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And here it is, and great grace was upon them all. Amen. Hallelujah. God's word is blessed. I want to talk again from the subject as we began last week. I want to talk about call to greater grace. Say that with me, greater grace. We are called to greater grace. Tell your neighbor on the right, on the left. Come on, tell them. Talk to them. Neighbor, we are called to greater grace. Now shout at your neighbor across the railroad track, across the river, across the region. Shout, hey, neighbor, we are called to greater grace. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This is, again, another teaching importation that I want to share with you that the Lord has given uh, as we have shared on last week. I shared with you in our post-pandemic uh, reopening, um, amen, we, we opened when we were coming back in a couple of years ago, and uh, we established what is called our Grace Team, amen, and the Lord gave this um, uh, acronym, Grace, amen, and so I want to share with this, uh, as we involved all of our leaders, our ministers, our deaconess, deaconess, deacons, and all of our ushers and, and uh, our greeters, so that as we came back in, everything we do was to give God glory. Amen. wasn't about Dr. Hinton. It wasn't about Tabernacle. It wasn't about me. It wasn't about you. But it's about the grace of God. Amen. And, we, and, and God gave this, this, this acronym for grace because we do know that we are all here by the grace of God. As good as you look. I know you say you're fabulously fine because you looked in the mirror. You got it all together from head to toe. You casket ready. You heaven ready. You may have been in church all your life, been serving everywhere in capacity. But I want you to know today you're sitting in the seat this very moment, this very second. You're where you are by the grace of God. Somebody shout, thank God for grace. You are where you are right now by the grace. You didn't, you didn't do it yourself. You don't deserve to be here. And when I say here, I'm not just talking about in church. I'm talking about here, period. Because there are a whole lot of folk much better than you. Thank God for grace. Grace is God's unmerited favor. You don't deserve it, but God gives it. Someone said that grace is God's redemption at Christ's expense. Another acronym. But God has given us the, the acronym grace here at Tabernacle to, to signify five other things. And last week we shared that the G, grace, means we glorify God. Say that with me. Glorify God in all that we do. Glorifying God. And we said Matthew chapter 5, amen, 13 through 16, you're the salt of the earth. You're the light of the world. If the salt has lost its effectiveness, is what? Oh, y'all didn't read it. Y'all good for nothing. <laughs> now somebody will tell you, you're just good for nothing. You get all in your cheese and all in your feeling. 
But if the Bible declares if you, it, if you become none if ineffective, then the word says you become good for nothing. He said you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine. Somebody is watching you. I don't care where you are. If you say you are Christian, someone is watching you at every level of light. There's a dark world. People are they're looking for light, but they're looking for life. Catch that. They're not just looking for light, illumination. They're looking for life. Trying to live. Trying to find something that gives life. You are that light. If you say the Lord save you. How many saved people do I have in here? Any Christians in here? Any, any Christians? Any? Okay, I got one that was willing to stand up with both hands. All right, praise God. Thank you, sir. We ought to be that bold to declare, I'm a Christian. I'm not ashamed. I'm, I'm unapologetic when it, comes to my, when it comes to Jesus. You, you can't be shamed. You can't be, you know, two-stepping and sidestepping and bag it up. Come on, let's see. I'm saved. I'm a Christian. Jesus said, if you're ashamed to own me before me, and I'll be ashamed to own you before my father. You're the light. So everything we do, catch this, I'm teaching principles and promises. What did I just say? I'm teaching what? Principles and promises. The principle is the word of God. The promise is what God said he'll do if you do. All right? So what, what is our responsibility here? First, G is what? I heard 30. I need you to get this principle in your spirit. Everything we do is about... What are y'all doing over at Tabernacle? <laughs> don't, don't, don't be sticking my name out there. I, I'm thankful that I'm a witness. I'm thankful that I try to be focused and integrity, walk in integrity, but it ain't about me. It ain't, it's not about you. Where is the steeple point, steeple on the church? What is the steeple point? It's pointing up, right? The cross points what? And out. So that's our mandate. Amen? Glorify God. Secondly, we said we ought to reflect God's righteousness. And that's what was happening in the book of Acts from Acts chapter 1. Uh, amen. They began in prayer, but by the time they got to Pentecost and when God showed up and showed out in their midst, uh, the, 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 the accusers, the, the critics on the sideline, the, uh, all of the commentators on the sideline said they drunk with new wine. But, but Peter said, hold up, wait a minute, let me put some Jesus in it. They are not drunk as you suppose, but this is what the prophet Joel talked about. This is the new wine. This is the Holy Ghost. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And from there, everything they did, they reflected God's righteousness. When you've been born again, you ought to reflect the, the right relationship you have with God. Because that's what salvation is all about. It's not just about going to church. It's not about rig rigorous religion. And a lot of people have gotten it twisted. You think, well, if I just go to church and look all, you know, put it in and polished up. Listen, you can take a pig and paint him and, and, and put some perfume on a pig and, and, and hello somebody. Lipstick, rouge. It's still going to be a pig. It's going to look for some mud. Preach Dr. Hinton. Make it plain. But we must reflect God's righteousness. Our relationship with God ought to be seen in what we say and what we do. Are y'all with me? Praise God. Glorify God. Thirdly, the A is anointed attitude and atmosphere. Their attitude was, we've got to keep praying. So that's why you look in chapter, Acts, I'm giving you some principles so you can go back and look it up. Acts chapter 1, they continued in prayer 
and, and they even asked Jesus, Lord, are, are you going at this time restore to us the kingdom of Israel? Are you going to restore the political kingdom and the military kingdom? Jesus said, it's not for you to know the time or the season that the Father has put in his power, but you're going to receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you're going to be witnesses of me first in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and then the uttermost parts of the world. And some of y'all looking at me, what are you talking about? Where's Jerusalem? Is that down the road? You know, no, no. He's saying to them, you're going to be witnesses in the area where he was in Jerusalem, in the city, in Judea, which is going to be in the region, in Samaria, which means you're going to cross some culture boundaries. Even those that you hate and those that hate you, you're going to be a witness to the Samaritans. Y'all remember Jesus met the woman at the well. She was a Samaritan woman. They didn't have no dealing with each other. They had a long history of, of, of opposition with one another. But Jesus said, you're going to be witnesses in Samaria. But you're going to also be witnesses in the uttermost parts of the world. But the key to being effective is, is having the anointing. Amen. You better write that down. That's another principle. The key to being effective is having the anointing. Not religion. Not just being the spirit of religion. What we've always done. Not just traditionalism. There's a difference between tradition and traditionalism. Tradition is the living faith of the dead. Traditionalism is the dead faith of the living. That ain't, that ain't a Dr. Hinton original. I don't know where I read it, quoted some years ago. Tradition, catch this, tradition is the living faith of the dead. Traditionalism is the dead faith of the living. We've been doing this a hundred years. We ain't never did it that way before. Sometimes the, the last seven words of a dying faith is, we ain't never did it that way before. God is not looking for religious folk. He wants relationship. He wants relationship. He wants relationship. How's your relationship? Hmm. That's why your life won't change. That's why nothing ain't changing in some of your lives. Yeah, that's why you're still stuck on stupid. I'm out here now. I'm out here now. Some folks are stuck on stupid. Same old stupid stuff. Same old stupid pattern. Same old stupid habits. We do a pit stop at the church on Sunday morning. It become a sideshow. You come, but go back, but there's no commitment to change. The Lord wants you to have a personal relationship with him. Can I have some witnesses in here? Those of you got a personal relationship, your life began to radically change when you began to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You don't just know about him. I know him. I don't just know him at church. I know, I, I know him on the track. I know him in the gym. I know him, I know him at the game. I know him at the grocery store. I know him at the doctor. I know him on the job. I know him when I'm around the saints, and I know him when I'm around the ain'ts because sometimes them ain'ts will make you say, thank God I know Jesus. Relationship. Say that with me. Relationship. That's what's been missing. Let me go ahead and say it. I'm out here. In many of our churches, too many folk have, have been misplacing relationship, re, re, relationship with religion. I'm going to jump from this church and go jump to another church, and then about, and my season is up, my time is up, then we go jump. Listen, it ain't about the church. It's about your relationship. Your life won't change until you decide, I got to surrender my life to Jesus Christ, invite him in, and take, make him Lord and Savior, and put him Lord and Savior of every area of your life. Change, break some of those old habits. Break some of those generational strongholds. 
I'm out here now. A lot of folk, let me say it like that. A lot of us, I, I can talk to our folk. We black folk. We people of color. We brown. We, we black. We've got a whole lot of strongholds that we've just passed on. We didn't deal with. Got some curses. Child, you don't say nothing about that. You don't, you don't push that under the rug. Folks are hurting. They've been abused. They've been, been misused. A whole lot of stuff that have gone on in family bloodline, and we have not said anything about it. Women are broken. Women are hurting. Men are broken. Men are hurting. And we come to church, and we try to cover it up. You can't cover up. You can cover up pain, but pain will still be there. If you really want to get healed, call Dr. Jesus. He'll heal your wounds. He'll help you to overcome your stuff, your struggles, yourself. The dysfunctional system that we have allowed to go from generation to generation. You, you, you know, everybody, well, he's just like that. No, the devil is a lie. Well, you know, she just got her way. Yes, yeah, she got her way, but that's a demon. You got to be able to recognize a witch and witchy ways. You got to recognize a demon and call it what it is. Priest Dr. Hinton. And we just say, he's just like, no. When you got a relationship, your life will change. You're not going to be doing the same old stupid stuff you've been doing all along. You know, you know, Sister Guthrie and, and Sister, Sister Chisholm, more, I, you know, the, the more I get more seasoned, I ain't going to say I get older. Stuff people used to say growing up, you know, we used to say it and didn't make no sense. Didn't make sense to them. Things I used to do, places I used to go, that's true, but it's because of my relationship with the Lord Jesus. It ain't because you got older and can't go no more. Hello, somebody. Yeah, place I used to go can't go no more. Yeah, you look, you look like a fool trying to go to a, a club. You in your 60s and everybody else in their teens and 20s. You, you walking up in that time and I'm an OG. No, you an old fool. I'm a diva. No, you a devil. Get somewhere and sit down. Every one of us have to do an attitude check. Somebody shout attitude check. Attitude check. Check your attitude. Your attitude, your perspective about God, about your relationship, about your faith, about everything you do, that I'm not just a, 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 a talking Christian. I'm an I'm a active, I'm a committed, I'm, I'm, I'm sold out. I am the righteousness of God. I am anointed to win. I've been born again. And I know I've been born again. How many of you know you've been born again? Come on, let's look at somebody and tell them, I know I've been born again. I know. Come on, say it with a Holy Ghost attitude. I know I've been born again. Say it like they don't believe you. I know I've been born again. I know I've been born again. I 
I know I've been changed. I know I've been saved. Do you know that? I know I'm a Christian. I know I'm a child of God. I'm not guessing. I ain't hoping so. I know. I know. I know he saved me. I know if he wouldn't have saved me, I would have been down in Harris County, Georgia, with a double wide or single wide trailer, paying child support, or doing something else. Oh, yeah. See, I got about two or three of y'all that can say, yeah, if it had not been for the grace of God that saved me. You, can I go old school? Yeah. Why must I be like that? Why must I chase the cat? Nothing but. And some of y'all have some dog in you. Still got some dog in you. You just got to have some control. Okay, y'all don't want to get real today. Today is Get Real Sunday. I've discovered that sometimes, Funderburg sometimes just has to go real. Sometimes you have to go raw because you can try to present this cute and polished sermon, three points and a, and, a, and a poem, and folk just look at you, oh, yeah, didn't he preach, and go right back out the door, no change. But when you break it down like a fraction and spell it A, B, C, it makes sense. Anoint it. Attitude sets the atmosphere. Are y'all with me? Y'all just pray for me. I tell you, I'm. <laughs> These folk were so in touch with God. That's what happened. That's why the Holy Ghost showed up on Acts chapter 2. Their mind was set. They were settled. And you got to know that your attitude will really determine the atmosphere and your attitude will also determine your altitude next level thinking next level living requires next level thinking are y'all with me Philippians 2 and 5 let this mind be in you that was what also in Christ Jesus Paul said in Romans 12, you know, I urge you, brethren, by the mercy of God, that, that, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your what? Reasonable service. Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The, the, the disciples, early the disciples, early church, they had an attitude that, that we're going we're gonna to stay persistent in prayer. And the unifying factors that, that led to Pentecost was the fact that they had prayer, they had faith, and they had expectation in God. Look at verse 32. Verse 32 says, now the multitude of what? Of those who believed were of one heart and one what? Soul. Neither did anyone uh, say that anything, well, uh, any of his possession was his own, but they had what? All things in common. It was a unified, they were in one place, one accord, Holy Ghost showed up and showed out. It was the, that, that power that brought them together and gave them a whole new dimension in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Th their purpose, their focus was to give God glory. Hallelujah. 
the next thing, and let's finish this. Let's finish this. this the C. The C is Christ-centered. They were Christ-centered. Say Christ-centered. Let, let, let's look, let's look, let's go back, if you will, to Acts chapter 2. I want to check, show you something. Acts chapter 2. Hallelujah. 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 And, and I'm preaching and teaching, but you need to go back and read Acts chapter 1. Chapter, read the book of Acts. It's, 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 the, it's, the, it's really the historicity of the, of, the, of the church. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 40, you there? The Bible says, and with many other, what, words, he testified and what, exhorted. Testified and exhorted. He was exhorting. He was teaching. He was preaching. He was encouraging. He was proclaiming the word of God. And what was he proclaiming? He said what? Exhorted. Be saved from this perverse generation. You see that? Acts chapter 2. Verse, 40, verse 41 said, then those who what? Gladly received his word were what? Baptized and that day, my God, can you, 3,000 folk got saved in one day. And the Bible says they didn't stop there. Because the word says in the next verse, and what? And they continued steadfastly, intentional. And that's what we got to do, Say We got to be intentional, consistently, steadfast, continually in what? The apostles' doctrine or teaching. They stayed in the Word, and not only in the doctrine, but what? Fellowship. That word fellowship here is a Greek word koinonia which means spiritual relationship, spiritual fellowship. It wasn't just, you know, we sitting around kicking it and having a good time, but they had a spiritual connection. It was a great fellowship. And that's why we come to church. We look for faith. Uh, we look for fellowship. Koinonia. Say that with me, koinonia. They had spiritual unity, spiritual synergy, spiritual uh, camaraderie. Hallelujah. And notice they continue in what? Breaking bread and in prayers. Come on, tell your neighbor, let's pray for each other. Prayers. And look at the transformation that brought about, it, that came about in the church. Then fear. This was, this was not just, you know, a, a paralyzing fear, but this was a reverent fear. Fear came upon every soul, and what happened? Many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Amen. They were united. Hallelujah. They continued. They, cont they were Christ-centered. We, we got to be Christ-centered. Amen. They were so Christ-centered that they, they sold their possessions. Amen. Divided them. They helped those who didn't have. They were sharing and caring. Verse 46 says, so continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they what? They, they shared and ate their meat with gladness and simplicity of heart. But 47 said they didn't stop praising. Praising God. Having favor with all the people. And who added to the church? The Lord added to the church daily such being saved. Tell your neighbor, the Lord wants you to be saved. Christ-centered. Amen? That's the C. The next one is E. Y'all with me? Exemplifying excellence. Say that with me. Exemplifying excellence. This is an impartation. This is a teaching. Exemplifying excellence. This ain't just for a corporate atmosphere either. It's for your own life. Every one of us. Everything we do, you ought to do it with excellence. But so many people got this mediocre mentality. Just enough to get by. I'm all right. That I right mentality. Just enough. Even in school, you just want to make a C. Some of y'all may have not, oh, I mean, some of your cousins. 
just want to, just enough to get by, a D, I'm passing. Even on jobs, people, quality of work, that's why you have quality improvement. Folk, you know, people just want to do enough to say, I came to work, I did my job, give me my check, I'm going home. And people bring that same mentality to the church. Just enough to get by. I did it. Well, it ain't my job. The word excellence. Say excellence. Excellent comes from a Greek word, which is hooper. Say hooper. Not not H-O-O. Not hooper. But like super. Rather than S, you use H. Hooper. Say hooper. It's, it's a word from hooper, and, which means beyond. And, 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 and ballo, B-A-L-L-O, ballo, which means to throw. Superiority, excess, preeminence. And that's who God is. God is an excellent God. He wants excellence. Therefore, we ought to give him our best. Why did you dress up today? Why don't you put on your best clothes, your good clothes? You got a date with God. That's why, that's why we do what we do. We want to give God our best. And we ought to take that same mindset in school, in work, in family, in home, and create a spirit of excellence. Stop doing enough just to get by. Come on, talk to your neighbor. Wake them up one more time. Tell them, neighbor, neighbor. excellence excellent. is doing more than average. Average means you're on top or the bottom. But excellence means I'm going to give my very best. Because everything I'm doing is not just for me, but I'm going to give God glory at every level. Amen? I'm almost through. Excellence. Say excellence. excellence. Whatever you do, do it with excellence. We had an experience um, this well, a couple of weeks ago on our way to Georgia traveling to um, aunt's uh, funeral. And uh, you know, we stopped at, a, at a, one of these multiplex uh, facilities, travel center to get some gas and some restrooms and get a bite to eat, got the gas, did the restroom and decided to go into, I won't even call the name of the chain's restaurant um, place, but walked in there and um, <sighs> my third cousin's nieces and nephews standing around, clocked out, like they had a clocked out look on their face. Walk up to the, have you ever had that experience? Walk up to the counter and I'm standing there, they treated me like I'm the invisible man. Shawana looked like she wanted, she was on her phone. Shanae Jojo. Just, I stood there a minute, we stood there a minute. Nobody said anything. I said, let's go. My wife said, what? What's wrong? I said, no, let's go. Let's go. If the service is bad, the food is bad. Pastor Rick, I said, there's a Chick-fil-A down the road. Where my Chick-fil-A folks at? Walked in the door. Hello, welcome to Chick fil A. Walked up to the counter at your service. How may I help you? Put the order in, got our order, ate the food, and that food covered me. I was good for the rest of the evening. But how do we reach our cousins? To stop just doing enough to get by. How do we serve in excellence? 
my challenge to you is ask God to give you a spirit of excellence. My challenge, my prayer to God to give us a spirit of excellence so that when everything we do, it'll give God glory. It'll speak volume of what was done. It'll declare that these people are serious about God. God is reflected in everything we do. Some of y'all looking at me. I, done, I lost two or three of y'all. Grace. Glorify God. Aura. C. E. excellence when we serve God with excellence we're saying God I, I, I want to please you I want to make you proud make God stick his chest out that's my boy that's my girl that, that's my girl and when you're faithful to God God will be faithful to you I said when you're faithful to God he'll be faithful to you Anybody know he'll do it? If, if you're faithful to God. In fact, if you're faithful over a few things, you don't have to wait till the after while and the by and by. You begin to see God start blessing your, the fruits of your labors on this side. Have you seen God reward you for your faithfulness? But because you understand if I'm faithful to God, you, you know that favor and faithfulness will follow you. I've seen God open some doors that you can't help but say that was nobody but God. I, I've seen God close some doors. I, I've seen God make some ways out. I've seen God connect me with folk and connect me with people that I'm saying, why am I here? God will say, because you were faithful over a few. I can trust you. Everybody stand on your feet. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. Again, I, I ain't trying to give you no traditional religious message because because it won't, won't change your life. I want to impact you in such a way that you make you think. Hold your hands up. Who remembers what I just said? Who remembers those principles? That is simple. Grace. With your hands up, do you know that you're standing between grace and grace? You don't deserve it. But he so loved us. So, so, so that, that museum, it, you know, you, you could stick your chest out and say it's all, no, it's grace. Everything we have is grace. So some people say, Pastor, you, you, you speak to everybody. I said, I don't ever want nobody to look down on me. Because it's the grace of God. Even at the, t at the table, Odom, it's the grace of God. I want to give you glory. Grace. I want more grace. What do you want God to do in your life? I want more grace. I want to show more grace, but I want to operate in grace. That's the culture we want God wants to build here at Tabernacle, that everything we do, we do it in grace that we become better. I want to be a better pastor, better shepherd, better servant. But he wants a greater church. So as we operate in his grace, everything he does, hallelujah. Put those, put those hands together and just give God a praise offering. Come on, come on. If you're here today, you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior. We want you to be saved. God wants a relationship. If you're here, and we're going to do this very quickly. If you're here, you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior. Salvation is simple. Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart. The Lord Jesus. You can be saved. If you're here, and you've got some errors in your life, you need to give to God. Now's a good time to say, Lord, I surrender. Now's a good time to say, Lord, I want to make sure I'm right with you. I don't want religion. I want, I want relationship. If that's you, tell, tell the Lord, I, I need you to straighten out some stuff. Straighten me out. 
I need you to heal me, help me. That's you today when you come. If you're needing a church home, recommitment, reconnection, hallelujah, realignment, whatever you need, amen. You need to re renew your membership. You've been out a while. You don't know whether you connected or not. Now's a good time to say, Lord, I need to reconnect. If that's you, will you come? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you want prayer today, press your way to this altar. Let's pray together. Come on, let's pray together. Let's believe God together. Come on, step in the aisle. Come quickly, come quickly, come quickly. Let's, be, let's touch bases together. Let's touch and agree. Let's believe God. I'm believing God. Hallelujah. Tell somebody on the way down, I'm believing God. Don't, come on, just tell them, I'm believing God. When you get to the altar, just tell them, I'm believing God. I'm believing God. Hallelujah. For greater, greater. I need greater grace, but I want God to do some stuff in my life. I want to do some things in my family. Hallelujah. I'm believing God. I'm believing. I'm believing. Hallelujah. I'm believing. I'm, I'm standing on his word. Hallelujah. I'm standing. Those of you who are, you can come as close as you can. Brother Ken, Brother Carter, if you can turn, some others can turn around and come a little closer. Y'all, If y'all can get, get as close as you can. Amen. As, get as close as you can so others can get in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we can feel the aisles as long as you're here. Hallelujah. Let's believe God. Hallelujah. Let's believe God. Let's believe God. Let's believe God. Hallelujah. 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 Let's, let's continue. I, I received a word um, this week that uh, Sister Rose Duff, um, father passed away. I believe Brother Fred Hall um, passed away. Let's keep them in prayer. He's had a long battle um, with, with some, uh, some things, and they moved the family, mother and father here, and, um, and so we, we, we lift them in our prayer. Also, I received a call this morning. You all remember Sister Ellistine, uh, Ellistine Grant, Partlow. She transitioned on uh, yesterday. So please keep her in prayer. Her granddaughter called me this morning. Uh, you know, one of the things, you, you know, she was, she, was, she was one of our first female trustees. Her and Charissa was added to our finance um, team some years ago, but she transitioned. She's had a long, she's been a, a trooper and a fighter and never stopped. Had an accident, but was paralyzed. And so we want to keep George and her, her family in prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Let's believe God. Are there other names that I miss, may have missed? Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. Who's that? Gladys Adams. Gladys Adams. Husband is in the hospital. Yes. Reverend Sanders. Yes. Praise God. She got both son and daughter here. And somebody is going to Africa. He's going to Africa. And she's going to where? Japan. Amen. We'll put some all on them in a minute. Hallelujah. Got you covered. Yes. Erwana. Moa. Daughter. North Carolina. Wow. In Jesus' name. Y'all write those names down at, at the close of service. Other names. Other names. Kelly. Kelly Johnson, granddaughter's father, in the name of Jesus. Mary, or her daughter, all right, in the name of Jesus. Glennis Brooks got minor surgery coming up, in the name of Jesus, yes. Keith Berry. Who? Andre Spites, all right, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, let's believe Eric Little, Eric Little, Eric Little is in the hospital. Amen. Your brother, what's your brother's name? Milton Fox, Milton, yes. Mary Tate, all right. Now, which Mary is this? It's one, there's so many Marys. Okay, all right. All right, thank you. When you said meritate, I'm like, wait, we got to meritate. <laughs> Praise God. Yes, sir. Nephew. 
miles. We got miles in prayer. We need prayer. Let's pray for our children, our youth, those who are in school and transitioning, finishing school, high school, college, and every level. Diane Green, going to have a bypass. Yes, sir. Who? Yourself. In Jesus' name, speak healing in, in advance. Let's believe God. We're praying for marriages and couples and, and children and parents. Let's believe God for one another. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time that we've shared. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the witness of your word. Thank you for the wisdom of your word. I pray, oh God, now that every prayer petition, every every request, every need, God. You already know before we ask, but Father, thank you for the privilege of prayer. Thank you that we can come to you with all of our cares and all of our concerns. And Father, we come not with our problem, but we come with our praises. We thank you by faith that you're able to handle, you're able to live, you're able to mend. You're able, you are the I am. You are our strength. You are our mind regulator. You are our heart fixer. You are you're the doctor that is able to heal even the incurable, impossible situation. We thank you, God, that you're working in every situation. Father, help us to be a church of excellence. Help us to operate in greater grace, God. Help us to show grace and understand that if it had not been for your grace and mercy, that look beyond our faults, our failures, our, our shortcomings, God, you saw our needs and we say thank you. Thank you, Father. From the youngest child, Miles, to the oldest person, whatever the request is, we give it to you right now. Touch in Jesus' name. Father, somebody need a financial miracle right now. Somebody need a breakthrough in their lives. Somebody need restoration in their marriage. Somebody need restoration in their home. Heal right now. Heal right now on that job. In Jesus' name, we give you glory. Those who are aging, God, and dealing with some health challenges and some neurological challenges, in Jesus' name, we thank you for healing. We bless you. We praise you. We exalt you. In Jesus' name, we count it done by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Put those hands together and tell God, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to put one other name on the list. Olin um, Greer, Lady McCullough's father, uh, is in the hospital with some blood clot issues. So let's pray for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We give glory to God today. Hallelujah. Well, thank you all for being here today, uh, being in worship. Hallelujah. Let's prepare to receive the benediction, and we'll get ready to go home. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord. Let's remember our, our leaders, ministers, deacons, and leaders go next door uh, in the Life Center to receive uh, just the right hand of fellowship, and uh, hallelujah. We just go through very quickly. Hallelujah. Amen. Slip those hands up. Slip those hands up to receive the benediction. Reach up and grab something. All right. If I'm going to throw some money at you, you'll be. <laughs> yes. Okay. Go to your seniors. Woo. That means everybody. What's your age limit? You know. 50 plus. All right. If you're 50 plus. You can join the go to your seniors. Now, you can't get no senior benefits until you join AARP, and then you got to be 65 to get a discount. Also, Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Lift this countenance on you. Give you peace. Walk in prosperity. Walk in purpose. Know that you are anointed to win. Keep walking. Keep serving. Know that you're called to greater grace. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. And don't forget your tithes and offering. Amen.